Hello, Mike. It's great to see you uh, via Zoom, if nothing else. Hi, Paul. How are you? Well, I'm good, thanks. Mike, I wanted to talk to you because you are a supervisor and a manager of an assisted living seniors home with, uh, with long care home attached. You know, we, we read in the newspapers and on TV about these, these senior homes where the COVID-19 virus has come in and dozens of people in one location have died. So you are working in a very high stress, potentially explosive environment, caring for not only the residents, but the staff. And I'd like to pursue with you um, how your faith is affecting um, you in, in that environment. But first of all, maybe you could, you could, you could tell me um, about your environment. What's going on in your home? Are things going well? Yeah, so just to give you a little bit of background, so uh, assisted living, we have clients who can self-direct their own care. We have uh, 26 units, their own little apartment, and then we have communal dining services. We've gone now about a full month with no visitors, um, and really our whole world has been turned upside down. We have a number of other community programs that have been canceled, and a lot of staff have been redeployed to our facility. So it has helped us a little bit in having more hands on deck to help us. But certainly the staff are very, very anxious. I would say our clients are actually not. They feel very supported of the love and compassion that um, the management and the staff are providing them. So they, they feel great. They feel, I wanted to stay here, kind of isolated in my own little bubble. Um, and that they feel great. On the other hand, our biggest actually worry is our staff. They feel uh, quite scared um, with what's happening in the community and worry about themselves getting it um, or our staff or our clients getting it as, from them. Um, so they are actually our biggest worry. Well, you must feel a huge responsibility being a supervisor of the staff and taking care of these residents who, 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 who uh, may be out taking it in stride, but are, are at high, high risk. Do you think that your faith gives you a greater sense of responsibility or, or maybe asking it a different way? Um, you know, how do you balance the responsibility to take care of yourself and your staff to take care of the residents? So I think we're very well supported by our leadership team um, and have given very clear and, and concise directives on how we want to handle in terms of the protective materials that we have at our um, fingertips to help our staff be successful. Um, but in terms of my own personal faith, as we talked a little bit earlier, um, I still kind of fall on that middle ground that um, because of the faith that I do have, I don't think that we need to overreact, um, but I don't think that we need to underreact either. So because of the faith that I have, um, I don't worry too much in terms of the overall picture that's happening in the world. Um, certainly, there is a lot of fears that are coming out generally from the world population uh, over this, but because of the faith that we have, I feel that we can overcome from the comfort that we can get from many of the scriptures that talk about anxiety. Um, Do you think God will protect you and the home you work in because of your faith? I certainly can't speak to that. Um, you know, ultimately God is in control. Um, we don't know what might happen to us on an individual basis, and we never know what might happen to us um, in our home. I, I certainly pray every night that God will protect me and protect our clients. My clients specifically is what I really pray for um, because I am young and I am healthy. I, I think that if I was to get it, 99% um, chance that I would come through fine. However, many of the clients that we have are over 90. Um, they have many chronic conditions. And if they were to get something like this, they are at a huge risk. However, we have to put our trust in God that um, whatever his will is, will happen. Um, we look to the example of Christ when he's in the garden and he said, you know, not my will, but yours be done. 
none of us can predict the future. We, know, we don't know what God's plan is for us. Um, we have to just continue to pray and have hope that um, his will will be done and we will be protected. Do you think, uh, the flip side of that question is, do you think that God, or because of your faith, that God could challenge and test your faith uh, through this crisis? Yeah, certainly. Um, on sort of a personal level in terms of what's happening right now for myself, we needed um, management support in the building seven days a week. So my regular schedule would have been Monday to Friday. Um, now I'm working many weekends. I've worked three of the last four weekends. So the support that I would have on a regular basis through um, you know, Bible classes or Sunday services are, is not really available for myself because I've just been so busy at work and not able to um, sign on to Zoom or go to meeting. Um, so I have to find other ways to connect with those um, spiritual gifts that we have today. So I, I do a, like a daily devotional in the morning every day. Um, and then as well, continue to pray and just connect with um, fellow believers and friends and just, you know, see how everyone's doing. Um, because this is a much different time that we were living in a month ago. And we have to find just different ways of connecting and finding, um, having spiritual food to us. That, that, that's, that's really a really good, good method to, uh, to keep your connection with God strong in these stressful times. If you had to say there's one thing that has come into clear focus for you through your experience so far, what would it be? So when we think about what's happening in our world now, it's really shown that man is not in control. There's certain countries that have done a much better job or certain homes maybe that have done a, a much better job at controlling this. But on the whole, I, I, this is you know April 12th and I think today, they have reached 1.8 million cases worldwide. Um, and it's really shown that um, God is in control um, and he knows the answers to the world's problems. Um, I think it's given us clearer focus that, you know, man is crying out for, for help um, and not being sure of what direction to go. Um, we can go to many verses like Psalm chapter 34, where the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them and delivers them out of their trouble. Or Philippians chapter 4, uh, verse 6 is one of my favorite verses that reads, Do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your requests to God. So we need to continue to pray. If you're feeling anxious, that's a very natural response when we do have this crisis um, in the world, but we need to pray about it. Uh, we're told that we need to present those requests to God and God will hear them. So that is very comforting, and, um, but it has shown us that ultimately we are not in control and God is in control. Uh, and that can really help our faith to know that there, if we put our faith and trust in God, um, that he can help us deliver out of these problems that are, we're facing. Well, that's a great message, and thanks for sharing that, Mike. Um, uh, it sounds like you have been very blessed to date with no residents testing positive for COVID-19 or staff members being able to keep away from it so far, and uh, it's uh, my hope and prayer that God continues to bless you and uh, help your faith to grow through this time of uncertainty. So thanks so much for sharing your thoughts and experience. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Paul.